Tzarechot, he was known for his tremendous, tremendous tefillahs. He would sit for hours with tears pouring down his face. A regular tefillah. And when you hear that somebody died in that long, you would think that, okay, that was who he was. But he was also an unbelievable, unbelievable Talmud Chacham in London, who gained the respect of Rick Hager, the Chavis Das, the Chem the Shleimer, who we by earlier, who was one of the biggest places at the time. When Shilas would come to him, he would come to discuss them with the Chadush Rim, who was many years younger than him. But it wasn't just a nigla. In... Tzvi Hersh Zidichayver was well known for his Kayach in Kabbalah. He wrote many Svarim in Kabbalah. And the Chadush Rim said on himself in a rare moment where he revealed something about himself. When I was 10 years old, I could I could have written what Tzvi Hersh Zidichayver is writing right now. When I was 10. So he was somebody who had who put a lot of focus in his Oed feel obviously, in his Torah. <coughs> he was also a tremendous, tremendous by Yisurim. Who lost ten children, and he carried on the bone of one of the ten children. And if anybody was having Yisurin, he would go and be Menachem then. The Hadish Yarim lost either thirteen or fourteen children in his lifetime. And the Svasemis was a grandchild that he raised. He suffered from tremendous, tremendous Aeneas. He would go days at a time without having any food to eat. But at the same time, he would help collect for other Aeneas. He was somebody who was a, a chassid. We are, the Torah and chassidus was not something that he saw as two separate things. The Torah and the chassidus to him was one thing. And he learned under many, he learned by the Kajit Samagid. He learned by the Rebbe Rabin of Shizcha. He learned by the Abder of, he learned by the Kotzke Rebbe. By the time the Kotzke Rebbe became Rebbe, there was a lot of pressure on him to become Rebbe already. And he was better right for it. But in a typical, and this set the tone for Ger Chassidus, he said, if there's an Akud of Emes somewhere, I'm going to go and find it. And Mamele, he became, a, he, he hobbled himself in front of the Kutzke Rebbe. But then when the time came, he also then became a leader. He knew that it was time to become a leader, and he became a leader of Kali and started what was to become the biggest Hasidus in all Poland, numbering in the six digits. And today, it's continued in Eretz Yisrael as the biggest, if not one of the biggest Hasidus in the world today. So there were so many facets to him. I think the only thing that we can say is that he was an Ebed Hashem. That no matter what the Rebbein de- demanded and asked of him, or what he saw that the Rebbein was asking and demanding of him at that moment, that's what he did. If I need to be a chassid, I'm going to be a chassid. If I need to be a rebbe, I'm going to be a rebbe. If I, need a re- if I, if I, if I have to give away 13 children, <coughs> I have to give back 13 children. Whatever it was that the Rebbein demanded of him as an Ebed, that's what he was ready to do. And in the process, he raised a, a grandchild, Isva Semes, who grew up to be one of the big dialogue of Kali Show. I'll say you have a thought from the from the Svas Emes. So it should be Svas of Dovis Bekever. Svas of Dovis Bekever. Svas Emes talks about the idea of what the Lama Tesmanachas that we had in the Mishkan. That we learn out that that's what we don't do on Shabbos. This from the Lama Tesmanachas. Because the Lama Tesmanachas is the prime example of a voida of choil, chulin, cooking, sewing, different things of that ma- of, of of that nature. Those are the prime examples of avoid of chulin that we use for Kaddish and to bring Kedusha into the world. But then on Shabbos we stop. Why? Because on Shabbos we don't bring Kedusha into the world. We go back to the source of the Kedusha. The same way Hashem created the world during six days to bring about Kedusha into the Choshech, into the darkest of places, to prepare the world for that. And then on Shabbos he went back and he went and we do the same thing. And the Svasemis, and, and you cannot get through a piece of Svasemis where he doesn't say the word that you have to go to the Shairish. You have to connect to the Shairish. And this is the beginning of Shabbos, and this is what he extends to. This idea is something that he extends to many other things. If I can just share my own thought. This whole trip, really, this. Yerida Sadaris is a fact. It's a fact of life. The Revolution created that Mitzias, that reality. That this Yerida Sadaris. And the idea of Yerida Sadaris is this idea that we bring. Kedusha into places that are totally void of it. But right now what we're doing on this trip is, is a beginning of Shabbos. This whole trip is a, is, a, is a Shabbos. That we're going back to the Shabbos. And we're reconnecting and we're infusing ourselves with it. And then soon we're going to go back and the Shabbos is going to be over. We should be able to bring that Kedusha with us. 
I saw once in Chiddush and I haven't been able to find where I saw it again. So I'm not, I, I hope it's accurate. 